Hi students, my name is Sanana and I am here to teach you the subject of social science. Today we are learning chapter 3 in political science, India's relationship with other countries. Let's do a quick recap of what we've studied in political science before. We studied a lot of problems that India faces as a nation. We also learned what is India's foreign policy. We learned about Panchashila. We learned about non-alignment, anti-imperialist, anti-apartheid movements and so on. In this chapter, we will be addressing India's relationship with different countries of the world. We will be studying about India's relationship with some developed countries like USA and we will be studying more about India's relationship with its immediate neighbors like Pakistan, China and so on. So when we study this chapter in relationship, you can take as your personal relationship like for example in a class you may have some friends who you will talk to only during exam because you want notes or you need help. There will be some friends you would be having for playing. Some friends you would be having because you people may be doing some classes together like music or dance and so on. Similarly, when we study about relationship with different countries, we also learn from a similar point of view. With some country, we may be having a relationship to take military or defense equipment. With some, we may be doing technology related exchanges. With some, we may be taking aid, aid or loan or monetary help and so on. So let's see what are the various things that India shares with different countries of the world. So a family can never prosper without interacting with another family. Similarly, a country can never progress without interacting with another country. It's a globalized world and in this globalized and modernized environment, it's inevitable. Inevitable means it's not possible to do without it. It's inevitable for a country to have relationships with another country. It is not a necessity, but it's a need. It's very essential. In the fourth part of our constitution, under article 51 very important in the exam they will ask you under which article so under the article 51 international peace international peace and coexistence is explained it is discussed under the directive principles of state policy so India strives or India always wishes for cordial relationships with other countries because of the directive given in the constitution. Now let's look at our relationship or India's relationship with the neighbors. The first one is India and China. China is a very big country and has border with India. The relationship between China and India goes back to, do you think after the Indian country was from India and China have relationship? No, they have a very long relationship from the Mesopotamian civilization's time and the Sindhu river civilization times. Students, in the first chapter of geography, when I was teaching you all frontiers or borders of India, so China is a northern border, northwest, or northeast or east it is a northern border Buddhism originated in India so Lord Buddha enlightened or found the religion of Buddhism in the country of India and it is a widely practiced or accepted religion in China so it goes back to ancient times the relationship between India and China. Many of the Indian rulers had a lot of business relationship with the Chinese rulers. There has also been discussed in the silk trade. There was a silk trade between China and India. It is discussed or is documented in books that come from ancient India and these books are Kautilya's Arthashastra. Kautilya is none other than Chanakya in the kingdom of Chandragupta Maurya. In his book, 
Kautilya's Arthashastra, he writes about the silk trade between India and China. After the emergence of India and China of, as two sovereign republics, so China is a country of its own, India is also a country of its own, their relationship were guided by Panchashila principles. But there was a war that broke out between India and China in the year of 1962 because of the Tibetan crisis. After the war, border disputes arose between India and they have still not been resolved. Every now and then we keep reading in the newspaper about the border related conflicts with China. The insistence of China that Arunachal Pradesh belongs to it is one of the main bone of contention, is the main point of argument between both the countries of India and China. In spite of all of these border disputes, the bilateral or the relationship, trade relationship between both the countries has continued and is very healthy. Both India and China have the highest population in the world, while China ranks first, India ranks second. Both are identified as leading economies of the world. So there is a trade relationship between China after the 1980s and there has been further cement to this relationship after the 1980s. With continued efforts of India and China and some organizations like I told you all the example of SARC in the previous class, there is BRICS in 2015 it's a group of countries what are all the countries Brazil Russia India China South Africa this has strengthened the relationship between India and China so with China we discuss we have border dispute but we have a very strong trade relationship and we have also established BRICS now look at let's look at India's relationship with Pakistan Pakistan is our Northwest neighbor. India and Pakistan are neighboring countries. Pakistan is not only a neighboring country, but before independence, it was a part of India itself. But after the Indian Independence Act of 1947, both countries became sovereign countries of their own. So the foreign relationship between both countries started only after independence. There are issues like terrorism, Jammu and Kashmir issue. Jammu and Kashmir issue is a conflict as to who the state belongs to. And water sharing disputes are there. There's a river that flows, the Indus River flows from India into Pakistan. So sharing of the river water. These are the disputes between both the countries. There are three wars India and Pakistan have fought since the time of independence. In order to improve the bilateral ties between both the countries, many agreements like Tashkent Agreement, Shimla Agreement, Lahore, Bas Yatra and Agra Conference have been entered. But agreements like this have yielded or they have resulted in not a very large outcome. This is because even though these bilateral efforts have taken place, attacks on Indian Parliament House in 2001 Mumbai attack in 2007, Pathankot attack in 2016, these have continued affecting the quality or the outcome of, the, of such trade or bilateral agreements between both the countries. They have clashed over years about Jammu and Kashmir. But there are a few similarities between the two countries. Both share common cultural and economic ties and mutual exchanges in both the fields that have continued. The mutual trade relationships have continued ever since the independence. Both have responded to each other's needs during emergency and natural disasters like in the case of Gujarat earthquake, during the tsunami and so on. 